set on full. I totally surrender myself to the night. What witchery your heart to define? There's a diamond inside, and I kissed it. Face, Prince Eternal, Goth Boy, Click, Misery Club. What is up? Hold on, my levels are weird. Hello, what's up, Danny? What's up, Jonah? What's up, Liz? What's up, Marcus? Hello, Ruby. Hello, Taylor. Hello, Shameless. I am. Scatterbrained today. Wick phase Prince Eternal Scatterbrained Club. I gotta put my phone on. Do not disturb. Uh oh. I downloaded the new update and there we go. Okay. This is a crew neck sweatshirt. What's up, Charlotte? The lighting is good today. The lighting is, uh, it is pretty good today and nothing's different. I don't know what this is. I have the Pura in the background I'm going. There is no filter. No, I'm in my house, Marcus. Hello, Shannon. Um, okay. I was uh, trying to record today. You guys want to hear a song? Oh, wait. Actually, I didn't export it. Mm, let me see if this works. Hmm. Okay. It's like half a song, and it's not mixed, and it needs a feature. Uh, and it might sound crazy because I don't want to mess with Ableton too much while I'm, uh, while I'm street. Ooh, hear that? All right. Hold on. I am exporting a song from Ableton right now. No one has heard this. Jonah, this is over the... As above beat. Um, and yeah, this is this might kill my computer. Uh oh boy, we'll see how this goes. Okay. If anyone has any idea who should get on this song, let me know. There's a big open spot, but it's like kind of a weird song. I'm thinking another Black Winter Wells feature. Or maybe Meat Computer. But he sent me a, a song to feature on couple months ago and I haven't had time to do it so I feel like it's rude to ask him 
Hmm. Hmm. Here, listen and you tell me. This is completely unmixed. You can tell that I'm I'm like scattered today because I'm like. Oh, thank you, Cast Spells. I appreciate that. Thanks for buying that. Hold up, let me. Oh, thank you, um, Pang. I don't know how to pronounce that. What's up, Sweet Potato Punk? I appreciate that. Here, in the meantime, uh, join the Discord. If you want to say anything anonymously, do it in the open forum. Uh, <laughs> uh, I have merch here, including the uh, camo hat that Cast Spells was just talking about. My music is here, and my links, any other links, are right here. Thanks, Lilio. Appreciate that. Also, uh, if you want to avoid ads, subscribe. It's like $5 a month or something. Or if you have an Amazon Prime subscription, you can get uh, like a free Twitch subscription. So you can make it this one. Oh, and subs are 20% off right now? There we go. There we go, five ninety nine, twenty percent off. You do the math. I I can't. Um. All right. Here's a song called Hickory Grove. <laughs> uh. I hope it doesn't sound awful. Let's see. Tell me who. This is produced by uh, Bloodworth and Fantasy Camp. And, um, yeah, I need to send it to someone and ideally they would send it back to me in the next week. <laughs> so, uh, whoever it is, hopefully there's someone quick. And don't say Tracy because Tracy doesn't really want to do anything. He told me he wants to make a niche internet micro celebrity meme song. And I don't think this is it. Uh, so yeah, here we go. Hickory Grove without a feature. long part where someone would be singing Baby, the meadow isn't that far away. The 
JP might be a good one. I to the people saying doves, I don't, I don't hear it. <laughs> Thank you. Um, Bobby raps. Okay, senses. Shameless. Who are you? Eighty forty five owes me not owes me, but I'm waiting on a feature from them. Um, I don't want to overload them. Underscores. Um, I think you guys overestimate my pull. I'm writing these down. Maybe you can hear the pen. Okay. Zubin uh, is also working on a different song for me and I don't want to overload him and I've been begging him for this uh, other feature for a while <laughs> so I can't overload him either I should have listed the criteria uh, hmm the criteria are they have to uh, be someone who would be willing to do it I thought about Sparrow thought about Sparrow for this here's the deal with Sparrow Here's why I'm so fucking stressed. Sorry, I apologize. Effing stressed. Because <laughs> my dumbass, like, wrote all these songs. I wrote, like, you know, 20 songs for this project. And then I sent, like, five or six of them to Sparrow to mix and then I was like well I'll wait to record the other ones I don't know why and then I recorded them all last week recorded like 12 songs last week and then I'm like wait if I want this out in October it has to be mixed and mastered by October 7th and that doesn't give Sparrow a lot of time to mix it and, uh, yeah. So now I don't want to send him. Yeah, Shameless, it's soon. That's how I feel. <laughs> it's very soon. So now I don't want to be like, hey, Sparrow, can you mix these 15 songs? And by the way, will you write and record on one or two of them? I sent a different one to Darcy. I could push back the release, but here's the deal. I want... <sighs> Okay. So this merch drop, yeah, that's from the Garden Avenue tape. I have this merch drop um, that I purposely haven't been saying much about because I don't know when it's going to come out. Copes insists that it comes out after this whole project is released. Here's here's the issue with that. We have two merch drops planned: one for October, one for Black Friday. If I push the project into a November release, then that's two giant merch drops in November. And I'm not loving that idea. And I don't, I can't really imagine that people would be that excited about that either. I have to talk to Taylor. I mean, I know what the solution is. The solution is to either split the mixing up did something, did you have something significant occur on Hickory Street? Yeah, that's what I'm saying, Noel. I don't want people to not be able to afford. Yeah, I'm with you. I know. So I don't know what to do. I can split up the mixing. Here's the thing. Sparrow's mixing is so unique. And also, 
I get the impression that if I was like, do you want to mix this all or do you want to split it up? He's going to be like, I want to mix it all. Mm. And I'm also waiting on features. I'm waiting on like five or six features. What face, Prince Eternal, Goth Boy, Click, Misery Club. I'll figure this out. Anyway, pay for pain, saturation, gradient. All right, here's, here's what's up. Yeah, we will plot and scheme, Taylor. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> we will make this work. Um, is pushing back the release not an option? Not if I also want it to align with my merch drop. Noel says I'd push the project back if you have to, but still do the October drop with Copes. So this is the thing. I'm thinking like I can just put out another single in October, announce the project, and then do the merch drop. I think that's also possible. And then if it, you know, if this tape gets pushed to like the first week of, of November or something, that's not the worst case. All right, so he, thank you. Okay, sorry. Thank you. Yeah, it's a big drop. It's like <laughs> the merch drop is like as big as the, the mixtape. It's like 8 to 10 items or something, 8 to 12. Uh... The, the Black Friday one is only going to be like four or five items. So that's not too big of a thing. I'll talk about I'll get this figured out. Before I can do any of that, um, I have to play a show with Pay for Pain tomorrow. <laughs> uh, so we'll talk about that. All right. Pay for pain tomorrow, Philadelphia, at the Photo Club, a place I have never been, but I heard that it has a light up floor. Is the EP going on SoundCloud? Uh, I don't know. I don't know that we do we have a SoundCloud? SoundCloud.com slash pay for pain. Uh someone does. There's a metal band called Pay for Pain on Oh yeah, we do. We have one. Yeah, I'll put it up on here. That's right, Noel. Vampirilla, what can I do for you? Do you you just wanna <laughs> Alright, so Pay for Pain's playing the show. Listen, I'm in a band called Pay for Pain. It's me, Pat, and Dennis. Pat and Dennis were also in Tiger's Jaw when I was in Tiger's Jaw. Ooh, what should you name your horse in Red Dead Redemption 2? It's the Shire. I love that Shire. Uh, name it. Uh, Honey Pot. Um, Alright, so I'm in this band called Pay for Pain. Now we started in... 2015 2016 didn't release anything until 2000 um when when 2020 and then uh that was a an ep called pain some people just call it like pay for pain, like self-titled. It's not. Anyway, that was pretty standard. I was like, okay, that's what's up, Carm. I was like, all right, this is what the pain, this is what pay for pain sounds like. First DP, pretty normal. Then Dennis was like, I wrote these other songs. And they're very fast, and they sound nothing like our old songs. But when we started this band, one of the goals of it was to play like heavier music and kind of mix it in with like what we would write naturally. I, 
maybe maybe these heavier, faster songs are what Dennis writes naturally, you know? Oh, anonymous gifter. I never saw that. What? That's a thing? Wow. Thank you, Anonymous. You guys ever see the Curb Your Enthusiasm uh, episode with Anonymous? Ted Danson's Anonymous? Pretty good. Yes, very humble. Ted Danson donates like a, a wing of a of like some I don't know what it is. It's <laughs> he like him and and Larry David both uh donate money towards like some uh conservation charity and uh and Larry does it and his his name is up on the wall but Ted Danson does it anonymously but tells everyone that it's him or gets around that it's Ted Danson so people are much more excited about Ted's anonymous donation very good anyway all right so then Dennis wrote these like four songs right which is which 50 faults saturation gradient and big fish okay and uh we were like, all right, well, this will be a standalone release. We were playing those songs, but we also had, hey, hey, late start. Thank you. Yes, I am on Twitch. Uh, so we had those four songs, but we also had like five or six, six other new songs that weren't on the Pain EP. Uh, and didn't sound like any of these saturation gradient ep songs more or less they didn't really sound anything like that so we were like we'll do the the four punk songs as their own thing and then we'll figure it out and uh so then oh, oh boy when was this last summer yes last summer last june late may early june 2021 we went to the studio we went to the bunk with our friend matt schimmelfinnig who we also we've recorded everything with him he's also done some other cool projects uh captain we're sinking three man cannon uh uh cave people golden apples Biko. A lot of good stuff. And we recorded these songs, the first four on the EP. And then, I don't know what happened, but a year went by. <laughs> and we just sat on the songs. I don't, and again, this is this is the, the issue with Pay for Pain. And, and it's that we don't have Ben and Brianna there to, kind of guide things and like actually take the next step me pat and dennis will talk about the next step but for some reason it always gets kind of and you know bill bill kind of just plays guitar you know now he he helps us when it comes to the live stuff he he helps us with decision making but um you know, he's a busy guy. So, and he wasn't really around up until this EP. He wasn't around for the first EP, first uh, pain EP. So, yeah, Bill is the GOAT. I agree. He's awesome. Maybe moving forward, Bill will have more creative, not input. Well, I guess input. It's not like we're limiting him. It's not like we're saying Bill is not allowed to have... <laughs> It's just he wasn't around when we were writing these songs, but he was around for the recording of them. All right. So for whatever reason, we sat on these four songs. And then like in spring of 2022, again, don't ask me why. Maybe it was me. Uh, maybe it was Pat. I don't know, but we decided if... 
um, we just released these four punk songs like that sound nothing like our first EP and don't really sound anything like our other new stuff that's not recorded, this EP might get lost to time. And people might think it's, it might just be too chaotic in the sense where every project sounds way different or every project sounds pretty cohesive except for this one and then it just kind of falls to the wayside. So what we decided to do was take two of my songs um, that were darker, heavier, minor key, not as fast, not as heavy as as uh, as Dennis's, but you know whatever, and and re and record those at the bunk. So then we went back to the bunk in like June or July of 2022. Um, we recorded all this live. Oh, and then Pat had a song, which is Polluted Eyeballs. Here's the deal with that. Pat was like, I have a song that would be good, like a good 30-second, um, you know, it would be like a good 30-second song that we can, like, fade in, fade out at the end of a song, like an outro or, like, a hidden track or something like that. That didn't happen. What we did was just recorded it. And then put it out as a different song. I don't know why. But that's how it happened. <laughs> um, again, I, I, you know, it's me, Pat, and Dennis making decisions. So, <laughs> you know, even if I'm the one making a decision, I don't always really know why I did something. You know, being in a band is way different than, way different than Wicca phase where I can just, you know, pretty much do whatever I want. Um, thank you, Romeo. It's just, you know, it's tricky. Especially when we're adults. <laughs> it was easier when we were like 17 years old to be like, we don't know what we're doing, but it doesn't matter because we're kids. And now it, you know, <laughs> uh, Again, we don't have a Ben or a Brianna to to just say fuck it, like this is it, and we're you know, whatever. So we recorded uh, "Going to Hell," "Mine and Mystic," and "Polluted Eyeballs," and uh, um, and then we got it mastered, and then we sat on it again for like two months, and then. We released the song Saturation Gradient. Um, when? When did we do that? Uh, oh, in April. Okay, so <laughs> it is possible. My timeline is a little fucked. I'm pretty sure we released Saturation Gradient, the song. Yes, we did. Before we recorded Going to Hell, Mine and Mystic, <laughs> and Polluted Eyeballs. So we released the first song back in April. Oh my god. Then went back this summer to record the other song. That's how it happened. Um, And then, last week? Yes. Last Monday. Last Monday. Dennis texted the group and was like, let's put out the songs on Friday. <laughs> so we did. <laughs> and now they're live. So um, here's what I'll do. I'll, I'll, um, I'll play them. They're short, very short. I'll talk about them. I have some demos. And then we can go from there. All right, so the first song is 50 Faults. Uh, so again, 50 Faults, which is which, Saturation Gradient, and Big Fish are all written by Dennis. All right, this is uh, Pay for Pain, 50 Faults. It's going to come in hot, I'm warning you. <laughs> Let's go. 
All right, so the lyrics are up on the band camp that are there. Um, Dennis wrote my lyrics for this, for his songs. Does that make sense? He kind of wrote the songs and was like, uh, you know, singing this part. 50 Faults is a weird one uh, because Bill is playing uh, Bill is playing um, like a palm muted guitar and I'm playing just open again we track these live uh, but it sounds really good nice and separated that's Bill on the solo too um, keep it going here's which is which the song is very hard to play on guitar. I will say that Dennis recorded his vocals incredibly quick for this. And it's exactly how they sounded in the demos. He just naturally, I think this is Dennis's natural singing voice. Uh, that's that. Listen to Pat. Wait, hold on. Listen to Pat's. Listen to Pat's drumming at the end of this. Yeah, his, <laughs> Listen to how Pat ends this song. He's. I say it all the time, but I am so fortunate, so fortunate. Uh, to to have Pat in my life and to have played, been able to play so much music with Pat because I think he's just like the best drummer and. Having a, a good drummer like that is always so important. Dennis is also an incredible bassist. I'm not taking anything away from him. Uh, Dennis is also great because I never have to tell Dennis what to do. He just does. He just knows. Like, he hears it. You know, Pat's the same way, too. Um, yeah, listen to Pat's drums. <laughs> yeah, no, this is so fast. <laughs> Really crazy. All right, then the title track, Saturation Gradient, which for some reason has a significant amount, uh, significant more amount of streams than anything else on the CP. What is Dennis' affiliation with the Muslim-ruled area of uh, Al-Andalus? I have no idea. Listen, I don't ask questions. When that... <laughs> I don't... Yeah, I don't, I don't ask questions. I love this song, Saturation Gradient. True, Shannon. Bill on guitar and I'm singing an octave lower than Dennis maybe two octaves lower I don't know that's my low voice Dennis's high voice And this is just some weird pedal effect that uh, Bill hit and we tracked. And then uh, Big Fish is the last of Dennis's four. Uh, 
Yes. Uh, yes. Quickly, I will say that I think this is the most uh easily digestible of these four, and I pushed for this as a single, and no one else wanted it. So I don't know. Uh, I like the way these are mixed too, Matt. I mean, it, it is natural. Everything is the recording is natural. The, like the tracking is natural the equipment that we're using is natural it you know what you hear is what we played and how we sang it um even the effects a lot of them are vocal any reverb or anything like that is a live uh reverb you know it, it's um matt will normally have the microphone running through an amp or something like that and he'll get the mic and the effects from the amp and then it's just mixed like that really natural sounding really nice uh anyway big fish this should have been a single Ocean 200 is Bill's other band that Dennis decided to write about. Those are my harmonies the rest is done So that's those four, which would be like side A of that. We always fuck up the ending of that song. Not, <laughs> I don't know why. Um, so that's that. And then we have my two songs, which would have been on, had this been released last year, those first four songs, had they been released, these next two songs, probably the next three songs would have been uh, on the next pay for pain full length, which is not recorded, and now probably not a full length because we used two of the songs for this. Uh, I don't know. I have no shortage of songs that I want pay for pain to play. Um, so we have going to hell, minor mystic, and polluted eyeballs. All right, going to hell is super old. Uh, this is like another one of those. Uh, another one of those, like post Tiger's Jaw, Adam songs <laughs> that probably would have been for Tiger's Jaw. Um, when is this from? I'm trying to find uh, like an email or something. I have a demo of it. Um. Let me see. Uh, 2015. Yes, 2015 I wrote this. So here's a... I have two acoustic versions of it. I'll play the better of the two, which might be more recent. 
yeah, I wrote these on acru- on uh, acoustic guitar. Um, this one's weird because it's just like the same verse twice. Which is not something I I usually do. Uh, Anyway, here's an acoustic version of Going to Hell. Uh, The song is also... There used to be like a... uh, When I was young, like 12, 12 or 13, there was a local band. All right, I don't remember which of the two it was. There was a band called Mr. Mike. Mr. Mike was like... uh, Kind of sounded like the Ramones or like mm, maybe more like Screeching Weasel or like those types of bands. Uh, either them or this band called The Losers. But one of them had a song called Going to Hell that sounded nothing like this. It was like a, a super fast punk song. Uh, how do you know it was Mr. Mike? Wait, Pen, you know that it was Mr. Mike? I don't I I don't Oh yeah, I said it at all I said it at the Good Things Fest, but I don't know that I was 100% right. The Losers is an old band uh that's now defunct. I'm sure there's a million bands called The Losers. This was a band with uh Mike Gibbons fronting it. Anyway, here's uh Going to Hell acoustic. <laughs> Who's my inspo? Uh, Lil Tracy. The chords are uh, E minor, 7, D7. the B bass and then a C major 7 this guitar sounds bad by the way (laughs) sorry I'm going to hell
Um, okay, that's that. Uh, and then here's like the actual one, which, um, you know, you need those big, the song needs these big drum hits and electric guitar hits, long chords run, run, run out. Pat, Pat recorded the shaker and tambourine right behind me in this room. The rest of it was recorded at the bum. Brother, this is released. That last chorus, I had the idea for a back and forth vocal, and then when we were recording it, I forgot to write it. So that was written pretty quickly, but sounded good. Um, then we have Mine and Mystic. Should I, do you want to hear this acoustic one again? The demo version of it? I'll play it. Uh, and then I'll play it. Well, I don't know. It's kind of long. All right, fuck it. I'll play it. All right, here's a demo of this next song, Mine and Mystic. Again, this was supposed to be a Wicker Phase song. I wish I could find the demo. I'll try one more time. No, see, I don't have it. I don't know where. I don't know where this could have gone. I, I don't lose songs like this. You know what I mean? I don't. never happens if maybe if i called it something different uh i don't know i don't know how i lose a song but i lost the original original version of this so anyway here's a uh uh acoustic uh demo of it that i sent uh bill and dennis me and pat practiced this Push 
it up to the limit, pure emotion. Let me absorb the sunset so extreme. I've been obsessed with passing by. I cannot get my heart to stop. Looking for a portal somewhere else. How do I take my soul beyond the doorway? It dawn, fast running fawn. Barreling down the bend, bracing motion. Pray tonight it open. Push forward, I long. Follow through the forest of devotion Let's take tonight and make it about our old lives What happens if we can ever come back around Enchantment, I am here once again Holding my hand, synchronistic Yes, I did Ooh, play this mine and mystic I did play this at the end of the last stream. I played it twice on the last stream, I think. Which is why I asked if I should play it again. And you guys said yeah. The lyrics are on the band camp here. Critical way to love you, I will finally ascend. I've been on highways dark and wild and still I'm wanting more. Singular in my heart's desire for you, I'll do the most. What is this dark confusion where complexities are high? I see you in complexities arise. Desires mounting many in pain and perfect time. And my heart to know. I found mountains deep and mountains plenty I'm ready for the world to collapse and unfold I totally surrender myself to the night What witchery your heart to define There's a diamond inside and I kissed it Thank you Let's take tonight and make it about our whole lives Happens if we can ever come back around. Chem and I am here once again, holding my hand synchronistic. Oh, mind and mystic. I wait here utterly by. Yeah, I'll talk about the writing of this. All right. Originally, it was supposed to be like... Um, it was supposed to be like a Crystal Castles type... Um, really, like, really aggressive, distorted saw synths. Really aggressive. Um, with both a, a Reese bass and an 808... And then the drums were um, just really distorted nine Casio tone or Casio nine oh nines, so fast. Um, so like in all my files, the song is called "Fast Crystals," just so I could like remember it. Um, so like the first two lines are just about like how <laughs> how aggressive the uh how aggressive the the sound of the song was or was going to be before I lost it uh so it's that and then the rest of it is largely like what lp the next uh, album, the one that I recorded with Ben Greenberg then I have to run for cover it'll be so much easier when I have a title for this album the untitled album um the rest of it is like largely that, like there's like stuff about portals, there's stuff about nature, there's stuff about um like 
the nature of mystery, mystery at singing about the idea of mystery. Um, so it's a lot of that. Uh, and like just in like flowery language, you know? Um, I think some of my best lyrics ever are in this song. Um, I think the the turnaround that one verse ends with like what is this dark confusion where complexities are high and the next verse starts with I see you and complexities arise I think that's like that might be <laughs> the two the best like uh, two line the best two lines I've ever written I don't know why can't explain it. I just think it's good. I'm like proud of myself for that. The title's ridiculous. Mine and Mystic. Weird title. Cool title, I think. Um, and yeah, I mean, that's it. It The song would have made a lot more sense. I'm not bragging about these lines, by the way. I'm just object. You know what I'm saying. I'm not trying to say I'm not saying they're the best lines ever written I'm just saying of the, the songs that I've written I think they're I'm proud of those um also like what is some <laughs> what is the doorway at dawn what am I talking about there um again it's just a lot of it is writing about confusion and strangeness um in a in a more aggressive way than a lot of the other stuff on the uh on the next LP on the the Ben Greenberg album what's my creative process i don't i just write i write by Shannon i just i just write you know i hum out a melody and then i write it um, so that's that. And then here's what ended up being the song, which it, again ended up on this. Um, and this was when we decided. So that when we were like, we're going to add one or two more songs, that's when I was like, well, I have this other heavier one that uh, probably won't won't uh, work <laughs> uh, for the for the Wicker phase one. So let's um, try it. So that's what this became. Okay, so that's this puts an end to this uh, thing that's been going on in my head. My guitar, if you're listening with headphones, my guitar is on the right, your right side, and then Bill's is on the left. In okay, case so that makes. Or like if there's like someone playing something significantly crazier than the if one guitar is playing something like more intricate or difficult, that's Bill. I love that lead that Bill's playing where he's like pulling up on the strings.
Okay, this solo. I hated. Here's the deal. When we recorded Going to Hell, Mine and Mystic and Polluted Eyeballs, Dennis wasn't there because he had COVID. Um, so it was all we were hearing back when we listened to the songs back was uh, like two guitars and drums and no vocals and no bass. And I was like, I do not like that solo. To the point where we were going <laughs> to ask Bill to re-record something different. Then when the bass was in there and the vocals were in there, it made way more sense. Um, so I'm sorry, Bill. Your solo was good and you were right. He keeps saying it's like a ice pick solo. <laughs> okay. Also, that line is crazy. I don't know what I was talking about there. I think I had... <laughs> um... I... Um... Yeah, I don't really know what to say, but I'm proud of that line too. Again, I think this line has some good lyrics. I didn't talk specifically about... No, there's no specific reference text for this. A lot of this is... Uh... Just made up stuff, you know? Here's the deal. Sometimes I don't want to write about like very heavy things. So I'll write about weird stuff. Not weird. I mean, maybe weird, but more just like interesting and challenging things that are more aesthetic and branding and world building than they are narrative or biographical yes frank what's up frank <laughs> anyway yes And small player. Um, narrative being like, uh, yeah, world building is just like, you know, I could say that there's a tree over there and a building over there, and ten miles down the road is uh you know, old man Apollo's house. That's not narrative. I, it's telling you something, but there's no story there. You know what I mean? It's just factual stuff. Um, that's world building. I mean, I'm sorry. Narrative stuff would, you know, be talking, you know, uh, there would be a plot that moves forward. Yes. Right. There's a, Right, there's a, a hotel there and the, you know, a hotel there and a saloon across the street and a, a gunsmith down, <laughs> yeah. And then 10 miles, 10 miles out is the, uh, it's the river, yeah. <laughs> Frank. And then we have Fluted Eyeballs, which, listen, this is Pat's song. Um, 
simple one. It, listen, Pat has another band called Queen Jesus. If you like this song, you should listen to Queen Jesus. Again, this was supposed to be a 30-second thing that would be tacked on to like the end of Big Fish or Mind and Mystic or something. Instead, it's a, a two-and-a-half-minute song with a fade-in and a fade-out. Pat would not let me use a capo. Very hard to play this song. You have to stretch your stretch your fingers pretty far. Pat insisted on it. Pat has an amazing voice, by the way. Just saying. also Bill. Listen, Bill is very good. So so I defer to him. If you, again, if you guys like this, you know, check out Queen Jesus. It's Pat's other band. And Bill sometimes plays in that too. And we just played this song for like five minutes. How do you find your singing voice? Just speak at a normal volume. Speak naturally. Speak normally. And then sing around there. Go up and down. Which is easier said than done. For a while I used to try and sing really high. Higher than I could comfortably sing. And the song has a 30 second fade out. Uh, <laughs> yeah, and that's that. Pay for pain, saturation gradient. I don't really have a good falsetto. I'm trying to think. I think there might be a little bit of it on uh on the Ben Greenberg LP. I gotta come up with a name for that. Thank you. Show, then show. I appreciate that. Does anyone have any questions? I kind of just played through it and told you what I know, but there might be more that I know about this um, that I just forgot about. Otherwise, yeah, if you have any questions, let me know. Uh, thank you, Romeo. Physical release in the future. Here's what Dennis wants to do. Ready? Dennis wants to take these seven songs, record three other songs, and then put those on a physical release. Or a vinyl. What I want to do is take these seven and uh, put them on a cassette. Because it's cheaper and, you know, um, and we didn't have like any sort of vinyl, vinyl takes so long and that, you know, whatever. But that's, that's where we're at right now. Um, we'll see. I like Dennis's idea too. It's just, that would take like a, at least a year to, to do the vinyl release. Master 420 Weed Man says, hey, Wicca, hey, thank you. All right. Hey, Wicca, big fan. Thank you. Just found your stream yesterday. Is there any chance you'll be printing more Dark RX caps? All right. So at the Dark Medicine Warehouse, again, I should stress that I am just a small part of Dark Medicine. I am not Dark Medicine entirely. 
There is a box of Dark RX hats. Why are they are not on sale? I don't know. The same reason that it took so long for the paper pain uh paper pain release to come out. Sometimes a lot of times people I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> but yes, there will be. They're like nice nylon versions of them. I think nylon. They're really nice. They're not like regular like dad hats. But yes, thank you, uh, Master420 Weedman. Also, how did you find my stream? What What's up with that? How? Just from like um, Twitter? Like following me? Or did it pop up? Hey, I talked to Fred. I talked to Fred on Monday. Oh, it popped in your Twitch recommended channels. Nice. Yeah, I talked to Fred. I was a little nervous. Cause he, he emailed me last week and was like, hey, schedule a time for a catch up. And I thought I was in trouble. And then he just said uh, that I'm doing great. <laughs> that was it. He was like, you're, he was like, we're thrilled with your, we're thrilled with like how consistent your viewership is. So that's you guys. Thank you for that. And he asked what he could help with. And I said, one, what is the best way for me to get, uh, for me to get, how can I talk to people on here? How can I get other, other voice callers? You know what I mean? And uh, he said use Zoom. So I guess I'll do that. Uh, <laughs> and then uh, I'll just test that out. But yeah, he, said, he just said use Zoom. I told him about Discord. I, I was like, do I just use Discord? And he was like, no, 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 don't use. He was like, don't use Discord. I, and I don't really know why, but he was like, not. He was like, Discord is great. But the best way to do it is Zoom. I don't know why. I don't know. Yeah, I don't, I don't, I don't know. Maybe I'll try Discord. Anyway, uh, <laughs> I don't know what that was about. And then I said, uh, 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 I have like a mixtape coming out that I'm, um, that I would like to promote. Like, what should I do? And Fred said that if I give him two weeks notice, like two weeks before it comes out, he'll get me on the front page for a week. <laughs> or at least like once or twice. Uh, so, and, and closer to that, he would... Uh, talk strategy I think his suggestion was like go live like the hour before yeah I know Taylor he would like he said like go live an hour before like eastern standard time and then uh do like a listening party and then like do another one uh the next day another stream with like a follow up from that so that would be cool um, yeah. He also said I should, uh, um, put you guys to work more. <laughs> he was like, you know, if you need videos, have, have your, uh, you know, put a call out on Twitch for it. Or like, you know, have like, uh, he was like, uh, what do you say? Someone else, like, you know, have like, have people in your, in your channel make remixes for you and then play them. And then if any of them are good, you can release them. <laughs> I was like, all right. I was like, I hate asking people for stuff though. You know, 
And he was like, I know. He was like, <laughs> no, I like Fred. No, you guys are fine. I told him. I told him. You know. I was like, I don't want to ask them for anything. And then he was like, they're like your street team. And I was like, maybe. I don't like asking the people who work for me to do things for me. Dark medicine. Speaking of which. <laughs> Sorry. At Dark Medicine, we... uh. Uh, um, we're taking over a. So we're in like a big building. How can I explain this? It's like a big industrial building, and we rent a, a part of it. Um, what a part of the warehouse, right? Oh yeah, there's the open forum too. If you guys want to <laughs> submit anything there. But uh, anyway, so we rent like a part of this warehouse and someone rented like the next section of it. It's like divided into different warehouse spaces. And the, the people next, well, our landlord called us and was like, hey, the spot next to you is opening up. I know, Rachel, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. I'm gonna get that fixed. Uh. This will be my probably my last day uh, using this microphone for streaming. Yes, Shannon, we are back. So anyway, our landlord was like, uh, the spot next to you is open. And um, do you want it? And I was like, yeah, we'll take it. Because um, we have, you know, a lot going on. Uh, anyway. We need the space. And he was like, okay, come look at it with me, whatever. And uh, <laughs> it's filled with boxes, 1,500, 1,500 boxes of medical records, to be exact. It fills the room. The medical records literally fill the room, okay? And he was like, people whose medical records these are doesn't need them anymore they can be disposed of but they're not going to do it <laughs> they're from New York and they paid me for this spot 10 years ago and they uh, and, and, and now these records are expired so we can get rid of them and I was like cool Sounds fine with me, you know, whatever. And he's like, you have to help. He's like, all right, you have to help me get these out of here. Not just me, but, you know, the dark medicine team, okay? And and our, our helpers and our employees and whatever. 1,500. So what we're doing is once a week, we're taking... 200 boxes out to this man's truck. He has a trailer, loading it up, and then he drives around the corner to a recycling center. We send one of our employees with him. They unload the truck. I think you can only fit like 70 at a time. 70, and we'll take like three trips. So like we'll load the truck and then we'll send someone with our landlord around the corner to unload the truck at the recycling place. So the other day, our landlord decides to open up one of these boxes and he sees that it has metal. Some of the manila envelopes have uh, metal clips. And then the landlord says, we cannot shred these because they have metal clips in them. What we need to do is rip out the metal clips. So then we look. There are hundreds of boxes with these metal clips. So yesterday, I had a meltdown. 
I said, uh, listen, well, I said, <laughs> he was having us rip out these mentor plates. And I was like, Tom, I cannot, my time is not worth this. This is not worth my time. This is not worth any of our employees' time. We're not getting paid for this. We're helping you. This should have been, uh, you know, this should have been whoever's medical records these are. Should have gotten rid of them. We're doing you a favor by loading them out to your car. All right, whatever. And this man is like, well, what am I to do? Am I, am I to hold their gun to his head and make him come and whatever? And I was like, yeah, you should. I started getting real mad, <laughs> really mad. And he was like, I was like, listen, we're doing this for free and we're actually losing money because, you know, whatever. Again, our time is not worth this. And the time that we spend here is time that our employees are not working. And he was like, well, I'm giving you the space for free until the boxes are gone. So that's like, you know, $600 or something like that. And I was like, Tom, you couldn't pay me $600 to do this. You couldn't pay me double that to do this. Like, it's just not worth it. I could be streaming. I could be writing song, anything, whatever. Full on meltdown. And we came to no conclusion. <laughs> we just stopped. So I don't know what's going to happen. Here's the deal with Tom. Tom. Tom is a kind soul, okay? He's just set in his ways. But he's taking advantage of my goddamn kindness. And I don't have time for it. <laughs> And I don't appreciate it. Yeah. I think this is the anger stream. <laughs> I think this is the anger and frustra frustration stream. I know. Awful. He was like, okay, well, why don't you just move the boxes out of here that don't have the metal metal clips, the folders with the metal clips? And I was like, that doesn't solve the problem of, because we're still going to have hundreds of boxes with these things. And he was like, we'll, we'll cross that bridge when we get to it. And I was like, Tom, we're going to get to this bridge next week. You know, I don't know what to tell you. Yeah. No good. No good. It was bad. It was bad. Panopticon, I agree. Here's the deal. I think, oh, I don't know. I can't get into it. Poor Tom. We made a t-shirt with Tom on it. I don't know if they ever went online. It's like, um, but like all the, all the people who have, uh, see a lot of, a lot of my friends also have warehouse spaces in the dark medicine warehouse. Like we found this building and then we were like, oh, it's like totally unused for the most part. Um, like totally unused so we started renting it for like our artist friends for like art studios and stuff and then we made a, a shirt with it with like all of our names on it i don't know i don't have one actually I'll, if i find it i'll have it and we drew a cartoon tom on the shirt everyone's afraid to show him though they're afraid to he'll think we're making fun of him or something why did I tell that story? I don't know. I don't, why, <laughs> why the fuck did I tell that story? I just had to get it off my chest and let you know that this is like some of the weird. See, that's no good, Panopticon. I'm with you. I just had to get that off my chest. This is the stuff that I, I think about. <laughs> this is what I deal with. I also messed up. Um, I forgot that when I... <laughs> When when Dark Medicine signed the lease, I told them that I had an office job. And then yesterday, I let it slip that I was a full-time musician. And he was like, what about your office job? And I said, oh, yeah, I do that too.
Hey, to the per- <laughs> I know it was like the worst save. It like was not a, it was not a save at all. I'm barely at Dark Medicine too. I'm never there. Hey, to the person, to the anonymous drifter who wrote in the open forum and said that they're afraid that they're taking up a lot of space in the Twitch and Discord, you are not. Trust me, you are not. You, you're you totally fine, okay? And you don't need to out yourself and you don't need to respond here. I'm just letting you know, uh, you are, you're not. You're totally fine and inoffensive and not taking up too much space. Is polyamory slash non-monogamy a fool's errand? Uh, I don't think so. I don't know. I haven't tried it. And I have no experience with it. This is from the open forum, by the way. I'm not just asking myself questions and then answering them. Um, uh, no. Yeah, I don't, I don't think. I don't, I don't think it's a fool's errand. It, I mean, yeah, look, the chat is saying it's not a fool's errand. Frank, I've been listening to that um that Lennon song, uh, Mind Games a lot. Man, that song is so good. That might be my, my favorite John Lennon song. Listen, I have to Get out of here. No, I didn't listen to the sound. Uh, Frank, is it a is there an album? What's the album to listen to? It's not. To, Danny, is it dinner time for you? Did you make dinner? Yeah, we're doing a Sunday stream. We're back. We are back on regular schedule. Here's my plan. Ready? Friday. Pay for pain show in Philadelphia. Saturday, we're going to the King of Prussia Mall to get new glasses, eyeglasses, and potentially a Burberry jacket. Uh, probably not. As I say it out loud, I'm like, eh, I don't think I will. I would like a new jacket, though. I might get a new jacket. You were at King of Prussia yesterday? That's crazy. No, I I don't deserve it, Shameless. That's the thing. I don't. No, Noel, you're wrong. I don't deserve this stuff. I'll <laughs> okay, I got you. I got you, Frank. I appreciate everyone uh saying this. I I I Cuz I also kind of want a leather jacket too. But I I wouldn't wear that as much. Anyway, I'll let you know what I get. Um, yeah, that's what I'm thinking, Panopticon, is that I just buy a used Burberry jacket. I don't know. How often do I stream? Tuesday, Thursday, Sunday. Actually, I should do it Sunday, Sunday, Tuesday, Thursday. Um, I'll be back on Sunday. Talk about the Pay for Pain show. Talk about my King of Prussia trip. Hopefully, I'll have new eyeglasses by then. It'll be like a whole new Adam. Hopefully my mic, my microphone situation will be fixed. And I'm not using a condenser mic. Uh, instead of a, a actual like broadcasting mic. Mm. Yes. Yes. Uh, okay. Yes. Thank you. Join the discord. Join the Discord. Taylor Lint there. Um, and I guess that's it. All right. I'll see you guys on Sunday. Thank you so much. Um, see you then. Goodbye.
Let's just go and pass on. 